First off, you see this here? That's the aluminum rail, holds the track. This is your adjuster for your wheels. These are aftermarket. You would have one that would have rubber if you have the stock ones. But when you push that back, that tightens your track, right? But the problem is that's aluminum and that's steel. So these get to really like to lock up on you. Then you got to replace these. At least it's just two bolts, but still, it's a bit of trouble. These things always cause you trouble when you're doing lots of jumps and wheelies because those bolts right there like to break as well as the trailing arms right around in this area when you hit hard. If your machine doesn't want to idle, it might be your throttle here. So you see when I have it like this, you see that little nub right there? That's a sensor. That has to be in at idle or else the thing won't idle. That's a safety for if something gets jammed in there somehow, it's supposed to shut the thing off so your throttle doesn't get stuck wide open. Makes no sense to me, but if it, but if at idle it's not sitting like this, it's sitting like this, the motor will die. I'll show you an example. Oh, she's idling right now. Watch this. See how it dies? But if our, but no, it still revs up. The sink still runs great. I was just up the mountain today, but it's just got that where this little sensor, if it's at an idle and it's that little sensor's out, it doesn't run good. See how when you wiggle it there and you play with that, it can sometimes die? Now there's a way to fix that so that this thing stays back. Another rule of thumb is if you fire this thing up or any old sled and you got blue smoke, generally you're getting oil. So that lets you know your oil is working or if it's mixed, you're just getting oil. That's not 100% every time. These old motors do like to smoke sometimes, but that if you get lots of blue smoke when you fire it up, you're getting oil. Now, if you're missing your little screens to keep the snow out like I was, and you're wondering what to use, just use a thing called chicken wire. That's for chicken coops there. You can buy that stuff at like a local feed store or animal store kind of thing. I'm a farmer, so I had some laying around, just threw some in there. Just cut her up and zip tie her in. It's all good, quite solid. It's about, for, for this slide, it's about the same size of holes as factory. So it'll stop the snow. Now this shaft always spins, right? Because that's coming off your secondary clutch, going over your, to your brake, then to the track. And you see the fuel hose, how it's touching there? They like to do that. So you got to zip tie them up here. There's some lines here you can zip tie to. You'll see it. This is under the air box. But yeah, those like to rub, and then it starts leaking fuel everywhere because it rubs all the way through. So you just got to zip tie those up so they're not touching. The springs that hold your exhaust together here, where the exhaust donut is, these, if they're getting loose on you, replace them, put, uh, put any other spring as long as it's tight. Because if your exhaust is leaking there, you're actually losing quite a bit of power because this is a two-stroke. Now you might be saying, oh, I got an exhaust leak on my truck, I don't lose no power. In fact, I gain power on it, but that's a four-stroke. This is a two-stroke. Two-stroke needs back pressure. That's what this expansion chamber is for. Without that, you burn extra fuel and it, you lose power. So if you have a leak... Might as well fix it if you want a little bit more power. I mean, you can let it leak if you want. If you're doing lots of mountain riding or, pow or going through powder when it's cold and your throttle starts sticking because your carburetors start freezing up, this is kind of, this is kind of just a common any sled thing that has a carburetor. But just use some gasoline antifreeze. Can't see that, but clean flow gasoline antifreeze. That's all you need, just one bottle per tank, and you'll be good to go. Won't seize up on you. Now, these motors are great. All right, you don't have to worry about those. They have no crank problems. They got no piston problems, nothing like that. The reeves are all good. All that stuff's great. These carburetors are a little fussy, but if you clean them up right and get proper jetting, they work good. People talk about the ACCS system on these going bad, then you run way too rich. There's a way to delete that. You can find it in the forums. If I find a video on it, I'll link it. Overall, these are good machines. If you want to beat them around, they're way heavier than the newer ones, but who cares, right? Have fun.